Slavery gives in to the desires of the flesh, but freedom comes from yielding to the Holy Spirit. The word walk indicates that one must submit to the Spirit daily. Uh, the RSV translates this, do not gratify the desires of the flesh. But that wrongly understands the phrase as a command. But instead, Paul gives us a promise. If you walk by the Spirit and you will not, it's a promise, and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. So the key here is living by the Spirit. However, verse 17 explains why believers need to walk in the Spirit, and that is because there's a great battle going on. There's a great conflict in the Christian life. The flesh and its desires churn and burn within us, even as Christians. But we also have the Holy Spirit. Hence, there's a conflict between the desires of the flesh. There's a polarization between the flesh and the Spirit in believers. The Christian life isn't easy, is it? So Paul explains why it's so important to walk in the Spirit, so that the desires of the flesh which we still have, which don't go away, those desires of the Spirit won't become a reality in our lives. So walking in the Spirit, verse 17 tells us, is not the same thing as coasting along in a fair breeze. There is a conflict. Verse 18, that conflict between the flesh and the Spirit points us to the need of being led by the Spirit every day. Uh, being led means being guided by the Spirit. We see the same thing in Romans 8, 14. Luke chapter 4, verse 1, Jesus is led, guided by the Spirit into the wilderness. The verb is used of being led or directed by idols. It's used of women being moved by sinful desires. These sinful desires lead them. And it's used of people being moved or led to repentance. When Paul talks about being led by the Spirit, he's, he's not so much talking about guidance for daily decisions as some Christians read it, although that's involved. But I think he's thinking more generally here of, of, of a life controlled or directed by the Holy Spirit. 